new Batman movie coming out. How dark is it going to be? Because like the last movie, well, the last seven movies has just continually gotten like the the theming of it, like the screen on the the fucking camera has just been so dark. <laughs> you mean the actual like film grain, the lens? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. like I don't it, watch it in a dark room. <laughs> the next one is just like that guy doing shadow puppets. It's just like, like, oh, I'm the Batman. I'm here to get you, buddy. It'll be the Joker. They already made that movie. Yeah, they already made that. Oh, the next well, one's going to be a musical. Batman. Aren't they doing a musical with like him and Lady Gaga? Like uh, uh, Walking Phoenix and Lady Gaga, and it's going to be a musical? The, the Joker sequel? Nobody wants to see that. don't think that's... Nobody wants thing. to see that. Get, I want I Christian Bale back. With yeah. Lady Gaga? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I want Michael Keaton back, dude. Yeah, been, Michael Keaton, yeah. Tim well, Burton, he, let's he go. Was, they were supposed to do that. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Kentucky Commons Radio Hour. We're recording tonight uh, in Brewgrass Homebrew Supply in Louisville, Kentucky. I am Michael Moeller, joined by one John Renane. Hello. David Satterley. You. And special guest, uh, Rob Arnold from Pregame Coffee. Rob, thanks for coming on. Ah, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, for those listening and watching, uh, if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, feel free to give us five stars, subscribe, rate, listen, do whatever you can. Uh, this episode is sponsored by you, our listeners, actually, and Louisville Ale Trail. Uh, so if you like any of this, go to LouisvilleIllTrail.com, check out our merch, check out our passports. Uh, by supporting us, you indirectly and I guess rather directly support uh, Louisville Breeze as well. So <laughs> we're all one big happy family. Uh, if also, if you just want to tip us a few bucks, you can do so at patreon.com slash KY Commons. Uh, Rob, you are here tonight. You you are the supplier for many of uh, my mornings uh, f- to get me going throughout the day. Um, pre-game coffee. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, so pregame coffee is a uh, sports centered coffee shop on Frankfurt Avenue. Uh, we've been there since August 1st. We had to move from our previous location uh, from Main Street. We were there for about a year and a half, and the building got purchased, the building sold, and uh, they kicked us out. So we moved to the former uh, Jerry's Junk House. On One of the coolest Frankfurt House. buildings in Louisville. Yeah, if you, if you know anything about Louisville and uh, especially the Frankfurt area, Frankfurt uh, Avenue area, You'll know Jerry's Junk, and it, it's kind of a landmark building in that area. It's the it's the building with the train behind it. <laughs> yeah. And once I tell people that it, it's got the train behind it, they know exactly what building I'm talking about. But how did the train get there? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've heard a lot of stories about the building, and in fact, some of Jerry's friends have come in and like nice. tried to tell me some things. And but no one can really tell me the story about the train. For anybody from Louisville, you know, if you're driving down uh, or up, I guess Frankfurt Avenue towards. Uh, Butcher Town area or wherever Clifton. Clifton, yeah, you've inevitably kind of driven through that section where there's on the right hand side of the road. If you're heading north, like this uh, property with like old, like cigar shop Indian statues, like robotic dinosaurs, terracotta warriors, yeah, like yeah. all that crazy stuff, kind of like from American Pickers or whatever. American Pickers went there. Yeah, did yeah. they really? Yep. Yeah, that they makes were perfect the sense. Yeah. Shoved I, in there, but that is your place. That is now pregame coffee. Yeah, and you yeah. guys have done a really good job, kind of. Keeping the bones of that crazy, wacky building, but turning it into just a usable space. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's not a place yeah. for hoarders to go visit. It took Season six eight. months. It took six months to get the inside of that place uh, built out to where we could actually use it. Uh, there was a lot of work that needed to be done, and uh, and I've posted a few pictures online about uh, some of the work. But uh, I mean, it took it took a lot of uh, TLC to get that into a livable space. In fact, he used to live in the upstairs where I yeah. have the theater and lounge now. He that was his apartment, and uh, I don't know how he did it. But because uh, the floors were pretty rickety before they got reinforced. <laughs> so, given your your background in coffee and also on the on the bar side of things for pregame coffee, you know, later in the afternoon at night, we thought it'd only be appropriate to open up the show with uh, Mile White's Uncle Disheveled. David, why don't you tell us a little bit about this beer, and uh, we can get to pouring some samples out. 
Yeah, uh, this beer has been a fan favorite for quite some time. Um, I believe it was around the first year that Mawad was open. Um, this is made with a special roast of uh, Southern Pecan. If you don't pronounce it Pecan, you're wrong. Pecan. Uh, wrong roastery, though. Wrong roastery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Southern Pecan um, roast that is from uh, Highland Coffee, which is no more. Uh, however, they have continued to do this roast specifically for this beer because of how um, cultist following it got for a while. Um, they've done Uncle Disheveled Days. They've done all kinds of fun stuff with it, but uh, it's 6.5%. Um, look forward to this coming out every year. I think the next iteration is coming out in just a few days. It's a solid coffee beer. You can pass the can. Yeah, it's... The roast on it gives it a really unique flavor aside from just like a Thank bitter you. coffee. You really get a lot of the... So Everyone calls it hazelnut, but it's Very not. Important. But sure. it, you really get some pecan. It's kind of like a pie. Yeah, they've come up with different variations of this. If they, you know, they do double barrel versions, different... Um, yeah, barrel aged it. They've done double coffee. I think they may have put vanilla in it once, but if not, and Scott, you're listening to this, I can just be wrong, so... Yeah, I'll do quick 10, te- 10 second tasting notes like you do get that big coffee aroma off the nose and it kind of we'll we'll get into more about the Arabica versus Indica strain <laughs> strains uh, of different kind of coffee but it's the more of that like kind of fruity coffee nose to me I don't least. think Kentucky allows Indica. oh yeah that's right that's right that's right <laughs> Arabica versus I can't remember what the name of the other Robusta Robusta that's right yeah. exactly but uh and is Arabica the more aromatic type yeah yeah and it's uh the robust is more caffeinated okay um but and it's it's lesser known like most of the coffee that you get is arabica okay i just get more of that it's a very bright citrusy kind of floral aroma but yeah this is always a really good well-produced uh local coffee beer yeah that's always, always, consistent always well received i always look forward to it um rob how did you first get into coffee well that's an interesting story um <laughs> i spent 18 years in health and wellness um, I had never served any drinks behind a bar in my entire life, whether that be bartending or anything. And I was, uh, writing a book on healthcare in coffee shops and I was doing all my writing in, in various coffee shops around Louisville. And I wanted more from my own experience. And I just had some ideas that I thought would be really cool to make the local coffee shops better. And I'm not saying that they're bad because there's some really good ones in town. And, you know, when I'm not working, I still go and hang out there when I'm the few times that I'm not working. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But so I was writing this book and I just had these ideas on like, man, it'd be really cool if I could get a cocktail. And at that time, there was literally like one coffee shop in Louisville that served cocktails. And then I was like, well, how about a beer or a wine? At that time, there was like two that offered beer and wine at that time. Like, if, it'd be cool if I could catch a game, you know, like a, a football game or something. But I didn't want to go to a sports bar mm-hmm. for a cocktail. I wanted to, because I wanted the peacefulness of a coffee shop. And so I just had these ideas that, like, man, it'd be really cool if, like, you could bring elements of a sports bar into a coffee shop while maintaining the integrity of the, of the shop. And so I, it, I eventually put the book down and became obsessed with just this idea. And I really think it's unique. I traveled around to Chicago, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and no one has this. And I'm like, well, either this is a terrible idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or it's, it's groundbreaking. Uh, I, I, we're still somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, I really feel it's a great idea. I really feel it's it's groundbreaking. I really feel that it's it's something that I'm I'm finding a hole in the market, and that uh, we just need to you know get it to more people. And the more people that see it, the more people that come are going to realize that this is really cool to kind of get a coffee cocktail, which I brought a few today. Uh, get a coffee cocktail and do your work. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, some psych students from Spalding and some dental students from U of L that come in and while they're studying, they get a coffee cocktail. Oh yeah. And it's just one of those cool things that like you can get the best of both worlds and, you know, still have fun at the shop. Before you opened up where did you, so you, you were working on some independent things. Was that like a, a, like a cell phone business? Was it coffee that got you into it or was it wanting to own a business? I'd I'd always had, I'd always had an entrepreneurial spirit um, my wife would tell you that I had ran a ton of ideas by her and she was like, Rob, that's enough. 
And so once, but once Sympathy. she saw, yeah, yeah, once she saw that I had uh, done tons of research and wrote the business plan down, and what I would do is I would go into every coffee shop in town and just sit there and count customers. I'd, I'd, I'd obviously order a drink, but I would sit there and count customers. I would sit close to the register and like listen to the drinks that were being ordered. Um, look at their menu and see, okay, what, what are they pricing things out? Like, and then like do all kinds of mathematical equations and spreadsheets and all kinds of stuff. And I had like this, these great data and then COVID hit. Yeah. And all of that data went away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all of it went away. And so that was, that was disheartening that I did three years worth of research and every piece of data was out the window yeah. because we still haven't gotten to that point yet. You no. know, and, uh, you know, you talk to any of the coffee shop owners in town and they'll tell you that they're still, they haven't reached 2019, 2020 levels. So, but, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. And, um, you know, I see improvements every day, uh, this, this month alone, we're getting a lot more afternoon people. So the, the, there's, there's a lot more foot traffic. The junkies. Happening. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the caffeine junkies. And, and you also started roasting at this new location. As yeah. Well, right? Yeah. We got a roaster and I had to. Just like I taught myself how to brew, how to brew coffee, because before we even opened, I bought a home espresso machine and taught myself with the help of YouTube. Uh, yeah, uh, watched hundreds of hours of YouTube videos on roast or on uh, brewing coffee. I did the same with roasting. I bought a home roaster and bought and uh, was doing just little one pound roasts at home with this home roaster, and just learning the process, uh, learning what happens with the bean as it gets warm, <laughs> you know, as it as it as it cooks. And uh, then I made the jump and bought a, uh, a Mill City two kilo roaster and it's in the back of the shop right now. And I did some roasting this morning, did some roasting. Uh, we'll do some roasting tomorrow morning. And yeah, that's awesome. And trial and error is, I mean, it's good for coffee, but it's just good for small business too. Lots of trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, so you've been, you were open in Nulo and had kind of a, you know, kind of getting your local following, kind of getting your crowd. And then you had to shift. How did that how did how did you approach that as a small business minded person? It was rough. Uh, it was disheartening at first, and I was a little upset at first. But um, I like to tell people I f- I fell up, yeah, because this new location is night and day better than the last location, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, the the people I'm partners with that own the building, uh, Zio, they're really good to work with, and so it it I, I couldn't be happier with the, with the move at first. It you know it stunk. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, getting a cut, you know, and you're like, oh man, this stinks. But you know, after a while it's, you're fine. One of the things you have to learn when you kind of do your own thing is like resilience. And yes. That you're yes. Just, that's yeah. like, things are just going to keep pushing you down and punching you in the face. Yeah. But if you can get back up and keep going and reconnect with new customers and whatever, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And you, and you know, you have a good product. Yeah. I, yeah, I know that. A, yeah. Yeah. I know that the service I provide is top notch, and that's something that I really wanted to bring to the table is is uh, you know extreme customer service. Well, you can look at it that way too. I know all three of us connected with your brand just yeah. from like liking your coffee when you were down in Nulu. Well, I appreciate. And so that, it's yeah. like when you're moving, it's like oh, we can't wait to go opening like and drink at the new place. Yeah. same good coffee, yeah. but now it's a new opportunity to reach new people. You know, a whole new demographic on Clifton now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's much better. To, to Michael's point, <clears throat> he said that uh, you fuel a lot of mornings. You fuel a lot of my afternoons, because, <laughs> so, <laughs> like today. Yeah, like today. Yeah. So uh, the the idea that I could like go in and like I, I didn't have my laptop and stuff, but like be able to sit there and do that, and then you know once three o'clock rolls around, I'm like I might have a beer or cocktail or something. Seven um, fifteen is the earliest I've <laughs> served. <laughs> I think I think we went in uh, when we had some friends in town to the Nulu thing, uh, and it might have been like nine or nine thirty, and that was yeah, it was totally fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had a lot of people tell me that they're going to break the seven fifteen record, but no one no one's I, done it yet. I, the first time I ever had a coffee cocktail there, it was pretty close to that. It was probably closer to eight a.m. or so. Yeah, well, there's a lot. There's been a lot around eight. But the seven fifteen that was a that was a hard charger there. <laughs> so we talked a little bit just about how you opened your business, and we talked a little bit earlier just about how you kind of you know just from I guess your own personal fill the niche that you want to fill see filled or whatever. But how did you develop the kind of coffee colliding with craft beer, colliding with sports. cocktails and spirits, spirits and sports? Yeah. yeah, how did you build your business model? Um, 
do you think you found the people you were looking for? And just, yeah, just, I don't know if you have anything to elaborate yeah, on there. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to keep it as local as possible. Um, you know, Louisville is a big local town and, and I've lived here since 05. And that's something that I've learned to embrace around here is, you know, the, the whole local scene. And so when, when it came to beer, I was like, well, I got to have all local beer. Now there's a few that aren't, you know, a couple of ciders that aren't. Um, but for the most part, like you come down there, it's mostly all local Louisville beer. Um, with the cocktails, I, I thought, man, there's, it'd, it'd be really cool if, you know, coffee and cocktails. And so I didn't even know that was a thing other than Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I did was just Instagram, you know, coffee cocktails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And is it even a thing? And sure enough. And so then, um, when I was building it, I, we actually went to uh, St. Louis, my family and I took a tri trip to St. Louis and the world coffee cocktail champion works in St. Louis. Oh, wow. Huh. And his name's Matt Foster. And um, I forgot the shop that he worked at. But uh, I went and visited him. I was like, hey, I need to pick your brain, man, because I'm opening up this shop and I need to learn as much as I can about this. And I met with him and then I got a couple of books that uh, I, I have at the shop that anybody can come by and look at if they want. But I, I just dove right in and, and wanted to learn as much as I could about coffee cocktails. And I'm like, all right, let, obviously bourbon. So let's start with a Kentucky coffee, you know, branch off of an Irish coffee. So it seems like your business model, and I can relate with this, is just really scratching your own itch and, and just yeah. kind of finding the people who you you use yourself as a base model and just assume other people kind of want the same stuff. I That's 100% true. I formed this whole business out of what I wanted. Yeah, I think that's perfect. <laughs> like some place that I would want to go. And we we only do this podcast because we only want to listen to ourselves talk all day. Because so. you got like seven <laughs> listeners and <laughs> well, three of, the, three of them are you. Thank you to all of our listeners on Patreon. And, the, and this is why we pay for John's therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You, can't, you talked about the, the person in St. Louis. Were there any other either like, you know, kind of like business people you looked up to or kind of coffee influencer? Yeah. So there's, a, there's actually models? a local guy. Uh, there's a podcast, um, Keys to the Shop podcast, uh, and it's crazy. Chris DeFerio, he's out of here in Louisville. Uh, shout out to Chris DeFerio. And uh, I've, I discovered his podcast while I was still writing the business plan. And I'm like, oh, this guy's really cool. And then I saw like his Instagram page or something, and he was outside of Quills or something, like a picture of him outside. I'm like, is this guy in Louisville? <laughs> That's cool. And so I tracked him down. And since then, I've had conversations with him. But you know, his podcast was a great resource because he has tons of people from the coffee industry and just... It allowed me to kind of get a, a quick discovery as to what is going on in that industry because I never knew. So I never knew it's called about Keys it. to the Shop. Keys to the Shop, and yeah. it's mostly coffee centric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. And, and check, the business of out. coffee. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I, I imagine it's a tighter knit community than I'm even assuming. But what what is that community like? The coffee community, and how does it differ from maybe what you see on the beer side? Well, I still feel like an outsider because I've uh, I, I've only been in it for two years now, three years now. And I, I still feel like an outsider and I don't know if I'll ever, ever feel like an insider, but, um, I mean, you go to, I went to coffee fest. This we year. feel that way in the beer world. <laughs> We've been here forever. Before. I feel, yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm just making stuff up. Yeah. Um, but no, I went to coffee fest this year and that was really cool. And you get to like hang out with people that are like doing that, you know, you, you immerse yourself in that, which by the way, it's coming to Louisville this year. Oh, I, yeah. I want to go to coffee. Fest. <laughs> Fuck oh, yeah, that dude. sounds awesome. You, <laughs> tell you what, you guys tell me you want to come and I'll get you tickets. We want to come. We, yeah. want, we want to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it'll be really cool. So, um, I'm trying to organize some, ev some offsite events for coffee fest. Um, obviously geared towards like the cocktail side of things. Um, and, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, so I mean, but yeah, there's definitely a community. Um, there's a people that get, you know, way into the weeds and I haven't gotten that far yet because I, I feel like I'm very superficial, but again, I just like what I like. And I, and I feel that not every consumer know like what you had said earlier about Robusta versus Arabica, 90% of consumers don't know the difference. Yeah. 90%. And that's what's cool too about when you when your primary business goal is just to do what you like, you don't necessarily have to worry about like do I fit into the nerd yeah. culture or yeah. like as long as you can pay your bills and keep your lights on and like, you know, serve people and make sure that every person who comes this is one I would we'll we can talk about this in the segment, but you I've never heard anybody say anything other than glowing reviews about your shop. I, I appreciate that. And most of the reviews are like 
uh, and this is something I try to emulate as well. It's just like how good of care you take of people who come in, try to tailor to their tastes, have a conversation with the customer. Yeah. It's not uh, like a model where it's just stuff on a menu and then it's just like order venti grande or chinga chinga whatever and then here's your thing out of a machine it's talking to a person and it's figuring yeah. out what you want what's going to make you happy we talk a lot in the beer world and the whatever about like the third space it's like a place to go between work and home to either just kind of hang out and socialize or to get a little bit of light work done we kind of often talk about that in the brewery setting what if i live at my third space then, well that's then you're me <laughs> then, <laughs> then you're a business you. owner yeah, yeah <laughs> I've, I've literally slept there so <laughs> but that's true about the coffee shop as well you know the, the brewery uh was a model of business but that that was a huge model uh what back in like the like netherlands and the Den- in denmark when they were kind of having that like Growth, when they basically first brought coffee over to Europe, I mean the the, the, you the know, coffee house, the coffee house, yeah, was the rise of the Enlightenment. I mean that's and the lot, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, basically. and that's something when I when I was researching this, I, I really wanted to look at like what's the historical context of a coffee shop, uh-huh. and it's a place where a community can meet and gather and talk and not have any judgments on anything and that's what i wanted to foster is kind of just an open air environment for people just to come and hang out yeah yeah i was i was reading the what the six beverages of the world or whatever mm-hmm. the history of the world and the their coffee or their segment on um coffee was really interesting because it was basically true i mean until coffee people were relying on alcohol to basically just survive and, boil, and you know like a low grade ale yeah exactly yeah. and and that was fine they weren't like plastered but they were still pretty like tipsy a lot then all of a sudden coffee comes around and uh you have like the the enlightenment popping up like people can come together and have clean drinking water to consume while also exchanging ideas in a sober sober way yeah then- but a week ago we had uh four guys right around the register none of them knew each other but we all engaged in a conversation while i was preparing their drinks and it was just really cool because it like it made it brought a smile to my face because i'm like oh this is exactly what i wanted yeah like all four of these guys are all talking none of them know each other but this is the environment that i've helped foster and that's what i want to push out to the masses and that's really where creativity is kind of bred in that in that kind of atmosphere is open um, in the in the beer world. It's kind of like, you know, if you have two beers, you you, you kind of shed the like social yeah. mass that yep. you have and you, you become a little bit more malleable to caffeine. will do that too, conversation. Too. Yeah. Ca- caffeine <laughs> yeah. does the same thing, too. And, it, the, you know, it, it incites you about uh, this um, with your concept, though, that like the duality of having both the sports aspect and the coffee aspect is you don't always see like dual concepts and like, eh, I don't know, like a roller skating rink and a, a, a bar, <laughs> you know, <laughs> roller, roller skating oh. beer and coffee bar. <laughs> but, but the, the sports and sports and like, well, that's why I totally said it works, could yeah. either be a great idea or a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but, but I think it works. I guess it was my it's point. An insurance yeah. underwriter's dream either way. Well, yeah. like today I had uh, all week long. It, it's, it's Royal rumble week in, in wrestling and all week long. I've had the Royal rumbles on it at, uh, at the shop. And a guy came in today and he's like, oh, hey, I'm going to that this weekend. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, that's and he's him and his buddies, like he knows a couple of people that work in WWE. And he's like, yeah, we, we know such and such. And we go to one of their uh, one of their live events every year. And this is the one we're going to this year. I'm like, oh, man, that's awesome. And so like just the fact that I had this playing on the TV sparked up this conversation with this guy. And he felt like. Uh, very comfortable in the space and he's like yeah i'll be coming back soon and i'm like that's exactly what i want to hear yeah, that's so that's awesome. the type of stuff that that i foster you know when we did when the world cup was on we had a ton of people upstairs in our theater room in our lounge and they were all just hanging out watching the game and it felt again it, it, I, it's one of those assurances like yes that's what i've been working for so you get those little victories like that like today like those four guys the other day those are the little victories that keep keep the motivation going do you have plans for the future of pregame coffee? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the goal, I, I finished with the goal, or I started with the end in mind. So what I wanted was after 15 to 20 years to have about four or five places and then to sell it. And this is literally my retirement account. Okay. <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Just, you're sitting yeah. in mine. <laughs> I, I see a lot of small business owners kind of, you know, I don't mean to diminish it, but you don't always see the work that they put into their product. And maybe it's just they're not talking about it. But I feel like 
with you, you've been very transparent in how you've kind of approached your your business. You are, uh, you're a LinkedIn user, uh, like like myself. I, I see, What's uh, that? I see <laughs> you posting on there. But yeah. like, I feel like you were you were somebody that came out of the gate, and you immediately were just like, all right, who do I need to talk to? Who are the people I need to know in this city? Who do I need to make the connections with? Uh, and you don't see that with every small business popping up in Louisville. Yeah. Well, that I think that that's part of the military background that I have and the fact that I worked in the corporate world. And so I brought those, you know, the leadership from the military and just experiences from the corporate world on, you know, business administration. Like how to do it badly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I've done quite a few. No, things identify badly. target, figure out plan to neutralize target and then bring target into my coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and that's sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes my brain can't get through like what do I need to do that day because uh, I'm there every single day yeah. Yeah. and I'm involved in the day-to-day -day operations and so when when it comes to business business planning sometimes that gets lost because I'm in the day-to-day -day operations so mm -hmm. much but we get we get again the little victories and and we'll expand when we can but and the fact that you've already you know survived a geological transport like that is huge that's big that's oh. big that takes a lot of uh, we opened the shop down on main street on september 4th of 2020 when i could only have like 10 people in the shop mm -hmm. <laughs> so like from the get-go from the very beginning that we opened up the doors it's been a struggle you know and not not due to ourselves and so and then moving and so but you know, it is, you know, what's the saying? Smooth seas don't make good sailors. Yeah, totally. And so that's that's what I keep in mind. And um, just keep plugging away, plugging away, and you, you, you cherish those little victories. I've said for a, w a few years now <laughs> that every business that like either opened, I would say that survived, but more so people that opened during COVID kind of are going to have a superpower and kind of already do just because you have yes. to learn adaptability immediately. Resiliency is huge. Yeah. Yeah. You, you learn, and that's another great word is adaptability. You learn adaptability, you learn resilience. Yeah. Uh, anybody that's open to business anytime should develop that. So, so a little backtrack, we were like, poised to launch a trail yeah right <laughs> right before <laughs> ding dong <laughs> and we we're like oh i remember wanting to launch in october of 2019 yeah and yeah. and we were just like no let's push it back it's too soon let's try spring of 2020 that was that was the plan <laughs> yeah. i got my first y'all can't of be funding. doing that <laughs> i got my first round of funding two weeks before shutdown oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> hey and like not to get super political you but um yeah. i've talked so i talked to a lot of like business owners blah 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 but all the government relief programs this is going to get political and I, I don't mean it to but all the government relief programs like they wanted you to give them your like year over year revenue so anybody who had opened up like on the tail end couldn't get any of that like ppp so or eidl I, uh, I couldn't get ppp or eidl but i got the restaurant revitalization thank act. goodness yes and that literally saved my business yeah i'm sure if i because i was down uh, I don't want to give a number, but I was down to some pretty minimal numbers. And when that hit, um, I remember I, I remember when I got the email where I was. I was at Slugger Field operating my stand at Slugger Field. And I, I got the email and I, I, just, I almost started crying. Yeah. Because it was a like, lifeline. It was. It, yeah. It was a complete reset of the business. And, you know, politics aside, it saved it saved it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And the principles that you founded this business on to me are just that they're so direct in the way that you present it. Uh, I think one of my favorite things that you've ever put into the ether was the uh, rejection of a loyalty card. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I like think about it all the time. I don't know. I don't it's remember. I don't know the story. So even at the last place and now this one, I've got every but at least once a week I get someone asking, why don't you have a loyalty program? Starbucks, Heine, they have loyalty programs. And I just say, no, I, I don't I don't want to do that. But the main, you know, I try to be as polite as possible. But the main reason I feel it devalues my product. Sure. I feel that the service that I provide, the the product that I provide, that's that's what's going to make you loyal. I don't want you to be loyal because you think you're coming to get a free drink sometime. Did uh, Cheers Bar in the show Sometimes You Wanna Go? Yeah. Did they have a loyalty program? No. It was well, your place. And, and my reply is, do you go to a five-star Michelin star restaurant and ask if they have a punch card? You use coupons. I buy the right. only... I only get those on Groupon, <laughs> so that's the only time I'm going Right? There. Like, would you go to, I don't know, uh, Chef Edward Lee's restaurant and say, do you have a punch card? No. No, you don't. Yeah. 
So I why would you come down to mine? I think about the 80-20 rule of business a lot. And it's I'm in more of like a retail thing, so it's a little different than like... It, but it's not actually that different. But 80% of your customers will generate... 20% of your customers generate at, 80% of the business. But then the flip side <laughs> is that 20% are going to take up 80% of your time. Yeah. The twenty percent are the people who want coupons, and they right. will take up all yes. of your time. Yeah. Yeah. So the point is to like uh, figure out some kind of a way to hedge your bets against that, to focus on the twenty percent that are going to generate, that are going to be the, like the people who actually yeah. appreciate what you're doing, yeah. and not the people who are there f- from a Groupon or a coupon. Yeah. And I've never done a Groupon. For a deal. I don't. I did a, a no, loyalty program at the last shop, and I saw zero return on investment. But again, I just feel feel it devalues what I do. So yeah, and it's a waste know. of time. Yeah, I agree. Well, sometimes we uh, we hear a lot of uh, angry people complaining about how you might not have a loyalty program because you know they're just they're, they're losers who talk and chatter online. Uh, John actually prepared a fun little game for us today: uh, uh, coffee snob versus yeah beer snob. <laughs> you, you're a little bit ingrained in the craft beer culture, so you yeah, kind of know yeah. that craft beer people are like oh, coffee people are the same way. Are they? Oh my god! All so right. that, this is good because uh, oh my god. I'll, let, I'll let John explain the. The gist of the game, but uh, we might have some fun with this. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> <laughs> do, do coffee people ever just go online and just like leave just crazy reviews of, of products? I don't like black coffee, but yeah. also I don't like this. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we anyway. have a, we have untapped. Is there like an uncupped or something where you can rate coffee? coffee. Like um, give it four sips there's right. not i looked there's earlier <laughs> today while i was looking for these reviews we you might write, know more than me write this down uncut <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. if We're you didn't know this is recorded <laughs> so. <laughs> so beer snobs are notorious for just kind of being like i would say kind of henpecky uh, gushing they have their opinions and they're not afraid to share them on the internet about the products that they enjoy from their you know their favorite breweries their places that they are cost indifferent to and that they just love uh, basically shopping at or like frequenting or whatever. We have a segment here. Um, I've got a couple reviews, and our job is to guess if these were left by coffee nerds on coffee products or by beer nerds on brewery releases oh, I'm or ready beer for this. products. I'm All ready right, for this. So I'll read a few, and you guys just tell me what you think. <clears throat> Number one, decent, redacted, with a hint of chocolate. Not on par with some of the better redacted that I've had over the years. Did not have that fresh smell. And that's usually a freshness issue. Again, not bad, but not worth the price. One time buyer here, three out of five. Coffee. I'm going to go beer because they said price. And I feel like coffee is generally a little bit more economical. Generally, More? but when someone when a when a cafe will get a bean that is like a rare bean, then like a Jamaican Mountain Blue, yeah, or something, yeah, and they'll, <laughs> and they'll and they'll go up in price on it and say, oh, because this is rare because it, it you know it cost X amount of dollars per pound. We're upcharging, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely a okay. coffee person. So coffee, beer, yeah. you got an opinion, Muller? Uh, I'll, I'll I'll say coffee just because I want to agree with Rob. I could all probably right. say all of these are coffee. Probably this was coffee, yeah. oh. and the product was Cafe Quindico Gourmet Coffee. Yeah, yeah. Once once you said the chocolate, yeah. All right, number two. The appearance was a rough-looking burnt orange tomato color with no lace. The aroma was toast, burnt tomatoes, salt, cooked lime, burnt hay, and skunk. One out of five. Beer. I, I hear lace, so it I has heard, to be beer. Yeah, yeah, lace, but... The color. I mean, coffee generally has one color. Tomato? So. <laughs> I, so, I, I feel like this is a curveball, but like I don't I don't understand how. I like. But like, hey, skunk in, in a coffee? It's... This was beer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Budweiser Michelada uh, <laughs> from Great Beer. So I found the lowest. He gave it point seven. That, that of, review is not surprising. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> I agree. All right. So moving on to number three. <clears throat> it was okay. I would label it fall spice as it had a strong clove, nutmeg, cinnamon smell, and flavor. There was nothing pumpkin about it. Uh, this redacted and only thing was the spices. I love company name. However, this one fell flat for me, sadly. Still a company name fan, just not of this. Two out of five. Beer. 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 
Coffee. Oh. What? Uh, Death Wish Coffee Company. Oh. Their chai pumpkin. <laughs> chai chai pumpkin coffee. Interesting. Pumpkin right. is what we're calling it. Normally, normally when it's like I like this company, but I don't like this beer. Yeah, yeah. you, you yeah, kind of double down on it. Yeah, I've that's where I was it. going as well. Yeah. Well, I hope that would have, would be a curveball for you guys. All right, uh, the next one up. Uh, short, sweet, to the point. God's Country, five out of five. <laughs> I'm just going to say coffee. Beer. Coffee. That was beer. It was a Kentucky brunch brand stout. 2016 silver waxed top by Topping, Toppling the Goliath. KBBS. Brewing Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so God's country. That title alone is just someone trying to do too I much. Know, I know, I know. It's just KBB. That's just beer yeah, nerds. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just they're just trying to cater to that to the snobs. A hundred percent. Also, what does God's country mean? That's the review. God's it's country. God's country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so. All right. Uh, next review. Ugh. I have no idea what people love about this. It tastes so damn awful. It's puke inducing. It's not worth the trouble. Two out of five. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Uh, worth what trouble? I mean, they they bought it, <laughs> so I don't get it. Like, <laughs> but they had to go, they had to go and find maybe, it. Maybe yeah. they stood in line for, for forty five minutes. Yeah. So then... on that premise of it was difficult to get, I'm gonna go beer. No, yeah. it was beer. Okay. It was for Westy Twelve. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, that oh. Maybe it is an old bottle, but you know, sometimes I do think that beer's overrated. It's still a hot take, though. It's still a hot take. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, by no means. Bad. All right. Uh, our next one up. Absolutely astounding. I couldn't even get myself to try something else for my second drink because this was so delicious. Perfect mix of spice and heat. I had a sip of the Kentucky variant as well, and while I'm not a redacted drinker, I could definitely have that drink and enjoy it. Frothy, delightful, again, the perfect balance of flavor. Five out of five. That's a tough one. Yeah, because that definitely could go, frothy could go either way. Yeah. This person has good descriptors. Yeah, yeah. that was an excellent, excellent. Yeah, I, I felt like I was idea. there. Yeah, hundred percent. But they had more than one. This is like a yeah. game of Clue. Yeah, well. more than one. That that many people get more than one coffee unless unless they get like a bottomless drip coffee. True. I'm gonna say beer. Okay. Yeah, I'm going coffee because frothy, and I don't. I've okay. never really yeah. heard beer is frothy. Good point. Shake it. Could up. be nitro. I'm, I'm going coffee, but also maybe because like they're in Arkansas and they're going to like Onyx or whatever it's called, and like they want to get something else. Yeah. Well, that was coffee, Ugh. and that was a review of pregame coffee oh. uh, from Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, that's a glowing review. So. And it's funny because I I reply to every review. Uh, that you I did get. reply to it, but I picked one from like four years ago. Oh, you would remember. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, but uh, well done, sir. So that was a good review. All yeah, right. that's a great review. <laughs> All right, last one for you guys here. Don't give a bad one for me. <laughs> Smells of heaven and tastes like unicorn tears. In all seriousness, has an unbelievable complexity of flavor with prominent tart cherry and cinnamon. Phenomenal in all respects. Five out of five. Beer or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. I'm going to say beer because of the tart. Nobody wants that, though. Mead, shrimp, heart of darkness, <laughs> meadery. So that's what the mead nerds are yeah, into no one, these days. No one wants a tart coffee. <laughs> yeah. it, would, it wouldn't be a segment yeah. if you completely changed yeah, yeah, the rules yeah, yeah. at yeah. the end of it. <laughs> so that was that was a review from a mead lover. So that was our segment. I feel like you guys all did pretty well. I'll go back and tabulate the scores, but uh, a lot of overlap between beer nerds yeah. and coffee nerds yeah. in my mind. We're all kind of looking for those experiences to have opinions about yeah well there's definitely some arrogance in both yeah <laughs> i think that the beverage vocabulary is really like fascinating don't say mouthfeel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh so to that point though i mean there is a lot of coffee in beer these days people are making special releases as we already had with uncle d any breweries reach out to me i can have have your beans for you yeah. I will say yeah. your beans are fantastic. Like your stuff is always super yeah. aromatic. It's super interesting. So yeah, yeah it's pronounced, pronounced pre games. Arabica. Arabica. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Arabica. Uh, but to that point, like, what is? Do you have any opinions on coffee beers? And what is the difference between like a good coffee beer and a bad coffee beer to you? Um, really, the the it's the the brewer makes a big difference because you can have the best beans in the world. You know, from Onyx or or you know whoever and if the brewer doesn't do their job then because it, it, it ultimately comes down to them 
you know, the roaster can do their job and do what they need to do with the beans, but if the brewer doesn't do his job or her job, then that coffee stout or porter or whatever it's going to be is going to be garbage. So I, I put it on the brewery side. And there's a lot of different schools of thought about like how to incorporate coffee into beer the best way. I know like a lot of people, I don't know. Do you guys know more about this than me? Because it seems like either you go kind of one of three ways. You're either going to age it on just beans. Maybe you run them like a pulse through a thing and crack them open. Maybe you just make a really strong cold brew. I think a and lot then, of it's done via cold brew. Yeah, that yeah. seems like the... But you lose out on some of that stuff, too, because then you you might know more about this than me, but when you do it via cold extraction, you're getting more of like the vanilla-y kind of thing. Well, the, so the tasting notes are bean-dependent. They're roaster-dependent. There's a lot of factors that go into tasting notes. Um, my my roaster, if, if I took... If you take the exact same bean, give it to me and give it to Quill's, and we may have completely different tasting profiles because their roaster is completely different than mine. Mine offer it's just how it is. And so regarding tasting notes, that's really dependent on the bean itself, the roaster itself. But um, cold brew is going to be less bitter. Uh, jet, you know, overall, it's going to be less bitter just because it soaks 12 to 24 hours. Um, it's going to have generally have a little bit more caffeine in it because it has soaked and it's extracted all those properties. It's very flavorful, definitely. Um but I'm a huge fan of cold brew. That's why, you know, when I developed all my cocktails, that uh, cold brew and, and a couple of coffee liqueurs are definitely the, what I use in my cocktails. Hell yeah. Should we move into cocktail? Well, just yeah. a, a quick point. Yeah. Um, I was looking for the date on this can um, of Uncle DeShovel because it's, it's been a hot minute since they made it. Um, but it, I remember, uh, you know, several years ago drinking beer and getting into it and tasting coffee beers and there was this like <clears throat> predisposition that like oh the coffee's fallen off this is not something that exists anymore or it's turned quote unquote green which is when you get that vegetal flavor um i into your point though it's it's how it's treated within the beer and i i don't like out of this i, I could i couldn't test anything that was remotely green mm -mm, no, or no. vegetal so the the process i would say over the years has improved to some degree um, but I think cold brew is the way that most people are getting along with it. Yeah. Path out or uh, shout out to path of totality. Path of totality. I, just, I asked Scott hand about that a long time ago, about how he did all that. He just says, yeah, you just got to use a fucking ridiculous amount of coffee and just drop it in there, man. <laughs> like he just said, I was like, do you use cold brew? He's like, nah. Well, cause theirs is also a, what well, was cold a brew IPA. Itself takes a ton of beans. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they use cold brew for path. No, not what he said. Well, they do well, they now. Don't do now. <laughs> well, he said he maybe he used some cold brew, but for the aromas, he said I just put a ridiculous amount of beans on there, like it's insane. So anyway, yeah, I think <laughs> not I think, to not to spill any secrets. Yeah. But, no, I uh, think, but yeah. it, but it is nice that, for lack of better like term, that we don't have to worry about that as much anymore. People are like figuring out the science of it. So, so did he like infuse the brew with the beans is that what he was saying he was doing i could be wrong about this because i'm sure i had had way more beers than him when i was talking <laughs> to him about this um but my recollection is in in brewing there's a thing called dry hopping where like when the beer's done you basically take more hops and you throw them into there kind of make a hop tea out of the finished beer for like ipas and stuff mm. like that uh so he was basically saying that they dry hopped it with like fresh coffee beans um there was probably some cold brew in the mix too but from what I recall, he was like, yeah, we want to keep the color light. I don't want a ton of coffee flavor. We just want all those like bright aromas. And so they were kind of dry hopping just with fresh coffee beans, like the lightest kind of fruity, citrusy beans that they could find wherever they got those. So like a light Ethiopian Yerga chef or something like that. I'll take your word for that. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably so. Yeah, because like Ethiopian Yerga chef is synonymous with like sweetness and fruitiness. And that's like in coffee industry wide, it's something that we all know that like a good Ethiopian Yerga chef and Yerga chef is the region. Anytime you see like on a coffee label, you'll see like the country and then another word after it. That's yeah. usually the region of that country. And Yerga chef is generally known for uh, having sweet coffee. How hard is all that stuff to keep track of in your head? Cause I mean, we get some of that, like, you know, wine people have like terroir with yeah. their grapes and stuff. And that's beer. exactly why I only have two beans in my shop right now <sighs> because I'm, I have to learn myself. Yeah, sure. And my, my, um, my blend that I use for my espresso is three beans. So, but it has two of, of what I normally have. So I only use Ethiopian, Costa Rican and Ugandan. Okay. And that's it. 
um, when I get better at roasting, then I'll add some more. When I'm able to fine tune things, I'll add like a Peruvian or whatever. You yeah, know, but uh, use what you like. Yeah, but for right now, I, I really just want to learn to dial these in and be an expert at these, and then I'll add more. Hell yeah. Uh, usually when we have guests on, we like to do a little show and tell segment. Uh, David already gave you the rules of the game, but uh, I believe we had asked you to bring something that you'd like to share. Oh, I got some toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we need ice? You're going you're gonna to want to have me on more often. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> David, what was your favorite Ooh. coffee experience as he's doing this? Favorite coffee experience? Yeah. Like, overall? Yeah. Other than pregame. Um. You know, what comes to mind is kind of the going back to the Uncle Disheveled day where there's a couple different variants. Um, to be completely transparent, I'm not super well versed in the world of coffee as far as tasting and cuppings no, go. Um, my favorite coffee experience is probably after COVID when I could go to Bean and sit there with an endless cup and uh, get my work done. <laughs> that is that was super helpful. Um but I, I think in general, as we've talked a little bit about before, the the third space of coffee is <laughs> sorry. The third space of coffee is what is appealing to me besides the beverage itself. So that's how I feel. Yeah. I mean I I want good coffee, but sometimes if the space is good or if the conversation's good, then something a little bit subpar is acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. We can reuse some of these glasses, so oh yeah. We've got okay. multiple drinks here. So what I I brought some toys. I brought uh, this little guy here is my um, uh, growler, and that's not a little guy. Yeah. It's a big guy. Um, and thanks to Woodenville whiskey, and what I have in here is our um, Kentucky coffee. So at the shop, uh, we have a, a whole menu of con- of uh, cocktails. This is our number one seller, and it's not even close. It's cold brew, vanilla, brown sugar, and bourbon. Ooh, whoa, and uh, because we are in Louisville, most of my cocktails are centered around bourbon. But uh, this one here is not. Actually, no, I lied. It is. So, uh, But I do have some that aren't bourbon laced. Um, but uh, you'll have to come and find out what those are. Okay. <laughs> so you want to try one? Yeah. Uh, let's yeah tell, let's give see. us uh, whatever the here. pitch you think. Yeah, yeah. This really, this is like this is a pressurized growler. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. It's pretty cool. It's pressurized with nitrogen. Uh, you don't pressurize coffee with CO two. Uh, it just makes it more it's bitter. It's Yeah, it's bad. Is that is that what blooming is? I, I'm totally ignorant of that process. But like when you're first making coffee and say like oh, a Chemics or something. You're you're trying to bloom the coffee and cause some CO two reactions or uh, more nitrogen reaction. Yeah, nitrogen. Well, yeah, but, yeah. There's C, there's a CO two reaction. Yeah, uh, I would be a horrible person to go down the science rabbit hole of blooming, but yeah, you're essentially releasing all the gases. Yeah, yeah. My but understanding is that CO two is a carbonate, and then it will carbonize which is a little bit similar slash a little bit different than oxidizing. So it's kind of like oxidizing in beer, but CO2 reacts differently with coffee and it'll carbonate the coffee, which you don't want. Whereas nitrogen just gently pushes. And you see the the foam in there? That's from the nitrogen. Yeah, hell yeah. So, and um, thank you guys. So this smells freaking amazing. Like this smells like, oh man. And it's effortless. It's completely effortless. Oh, I should have had this for breakfast. I just wanted, it yeah. smells like a del- like I'm I got lost for words, the, honestly. The two people that came in at 715, this is what they got. <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. They didn't get beer. They got Kentucky coffees. It's everything that's great about a bright cup of coffee. Coffee. But a small I was gonna we should call this like episode coffee talk or something. Coffee talk. <laughs> but then it's that little light lift of bourbon. Um the coffee is so light that it gives it some of those like aromatics that you'd get off of a like a cocktail with some kind of a bitter yeah. or a twist or like a something in there. Well, and it's a two to one mix of coffee to bourbon. So you're getting more coffee, but you're also getting the vanilla and brown sugar. So and then it's so light that it almost gives me like a vibe of something with like Bailey's or something. Like it's just so light that it feels yeah. like it's creamy. Even I'm though gonna, there's I'm no... going to contradict and say that there is a healthy amount of bourbon in here, which I <laughs> totally appreciate. Yeah. So. Well, I measured it. So yeah. hopefully Ooh, I measured good, correctly. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's and fantastic. And we're, we're drinking oh, these so good. out of the uh, custom made 
Louisville beer mugs. If you want to support the podcast and get a cool mug, go to LouisvilleIllTrail.com. That's one of these really the good, man. That's yeah. so freaking good. This is good, and I'm pretty... I thought I'd had one before, but maybe not, because this is... Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. This is memorable for sure. <laughs> it tasted like it's like perfect, like right down the line of coffee, sweet, and then bourbon. Yeah, and, and, there, and there's a reason that's our number one seller. Yeah, I sure. understand completely. And we're going to be awake until 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was a given. That's when I'm going to get to the shop tomorrow to do roasting. So <laughs> see, see you there. All right, so the next one is our pregame old fashioned. So I make this, and this will be a good time to plug uh, the promo that we're having for the next uh, two months, starting in February. Uh, Uncle Nearest is doing a nationwide promotion to uh, benefit uh, HBCUs across the country. And anybody that gets uh, one of their old fashions wherever across the country or at participating places like mine, uh, Uncle Nearest will donate $1 uh, per drink to an HBCU. One dollar doesn't sound like much, but when you spread it across the country for two months, you're thinking a lot of old fashions are going to be sold. Um, so that's something that I made with this. Uh, Uncle Nearest um, whiskey. And then... Um, it's a black-owned distillery in Kentucky. Okay. No, Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee sorry, so Tennessee. Sorry. And, and if it's, it's, HBCU stands yeah. for... Historically his- black... Uh, colleges and universities. Colleges. Cool. Yeah. 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 So here in Louisville, we have Simmons. Okay. And uh, that's one here in town. So, but there, there's quite a number of them. Um, so yeah. So I made that, and then the coffee liqueur that I used is Mr. Black. That looks freaking awesome. It is awesome. Uh, I used the Mr. Black Amaro because it's a little on the bitter side, and so it adds to the old fashioned taste. And then obviously bitters, and uh, for the secret ingredient with this is agave. Okay. So, Hell yeah. Well, yeah, not yeah. much of a secret. All I guess. right. Let's give it a try. It sounds really, really good. So, so we got agave syrup as your yeah okay. sweetener as the sweetener. Yeah. Sometimes I'll use a cherry syrup to put a little cherry on it, mm-hmm. so to speak. But uh, generally, I'd use agave. Awesome. So, ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so right off the nose, immediately you kind of get that what you, what you would associate with an old fashioned, like a muddled cherry kind of fruity, sure. but it doesn't s- smell like cherry. It's a little bit more deep and like robust, and then booze. <laughs> obviously, I think I'm getting a little bit of that agave too. There's definitely like a, a sweet little like, mm-hmm. tinge to the nose. Yeah, I like. And if you if you want to isolate some flavors. You can drink some of that. Yeah, give me a little skosh. Yeah, yeah. That is super good, man. I'm betting a lot of that flavor comes from that product. Tell us a little bit more about that one. Well, let me, uh, hang on. Let's do it just in here. I would love to take some as well. Yeah, tell, just speak a little bit more on what that stuff is. You got a little too much, Michael. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> Mueller can handle it's it. Not. Um, so Mr. Black's is a coffee liqueur. It's vodka-based. And um, it's out of Australia, and it is Whoa. fantastic. Oh, this is amazing. It's amazing. It's it's my favorite These coffee work liqueur. Perfectly together too. Yeah. Like yeah. So this has the 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 Kentucky coffee is or wait hold on no 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 the the old fashioned oh yeah the old fashioned so that's just Uncle Nearest Mr Black Amaro um, oh. bitters um, and then uh, agave. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's so good. There's like a little tinge of like graham cracker in this too. Yeah, a hundred percent. I might have to change it, my pants, but this is like the <laughs> driest, like fruitiest dark chocolate. Like the amount Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, that's so yeah. it's like good. when dark chocolate gets so authentic that it gets those fruity kind of things back going yeah. on in it. That's oh, really wow. good. I did, yeah. You're right. I think I did get a little too much, but uh, <laughs> but guess what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna save some for I, me and I don't, then some back it's in an the glass. There you yeah, there go. You go. There you go. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, two two out of two. I would say five star reviews from me at least. Those Excellent. are and they're super. I've never really had a cocktail exactly like that. Like yeah. those are really yeah. unique, man. And most people don't. Most most bars don't have a, a wide selection of coffee cocktails. <clears throat> um, you know, to name drop, it was really Safai that was the only coffee shop in town that had cocktails when I was researching this. And it's funny because that's where at Safai is where I filed my incorporation papers. Oh, that's oh, kind of nice. So that was kind of funny. Were you, were you enjoying a crepe as well? Or I actually was. <laughs> yeah. And their uh, their their purple uh, 
purple yeah. uh, latte or whatever, yeah. which, which is now on my menu. Uh, I stole it from them. Uh, <laughs> I actually just had a, a sip of that. I was over there on a Saturday, I think, for a coffee date, and yeah. it was... It was really good, uh, yeah. but if, if now that I know that you've stolen that, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Yeah, with, uh, no, Mike. That too. Mike Safai runs a good ship over there, so it, I, I have nothing bad to say about those guys. Yeah. All right, so the next one, oh, you got to finish this one first because I do. You don't, you yeah, and I, I can't imagine how good this Mr. Black would be in an espresso martini. Oh, uh, I I yeah. use the regular Mr. Black in the espresso martini. Okay, so that's a little. It's funny you say that. So. You mentioned Bailey's earlier. It's not Bailey's, but it's a hint. it's like a hint of that. But that's that's what people think of when they think of like a coffee liqueur. This or is way better yeah. than Bailey's. Yeah, yeah this <laughs> like, is this well, looks like they, Bailey's. They either, looks they like either think school. of that or like Old Greg. So I use Bailey's Somrus from a shoe. in okay. in my espresso martini and a couple of others. I use Somrus, which is actually what's in this. Hmm. That it's a chai liqueur that's in this. I used to I used to work for them. They're great. Somrus. Yeah, Somrus. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, they're fantastic. Actually, one time, I don't work with them anymore, so I can say this. <laughs> I remember uh, trying to connect you all so they could do like a mural at your old spot. Yes, because I'd already, uh, yeah. I'd, you knew that I carried their products. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Shout out to Somers, your 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 chai and your coffee liqueur and then your mango liqueur. It's all, it's all solid I stuff. don't use the mango, but the, the coffee liqueur and the, and the chai, top notch. The, yeah. it's, they're fantastic. It's good. In, yeah. Indian, Indian owned. Yeah. Great oh, company. is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm also going to chime in that uh, two out of two. This is a drink heavily uh, put with bourbon. So um, <laughs> this is this podcast well, is going to end up weird. Everybody. That's, that's your old fashioned. So that's going to be I am, all all. It, it's it's not that I am saying anything other than this is what I want. Although <laughs> yeah, yeah. although it's <laughs> Uncle Nearest whiskey, not bourbon. What I was going to so try to say is yeah. Tennessee uh, whiskey. Your boy getting <laughs> a little. In, into my cups over here. Good lord! I mean, it's, at some point we might have to get somebody from Uncle Nearest onto the podcast to to share the full story. But if you don't know the full story of Uncle Nearest, look it up. It's great. Good background. Huge connection to Jack Daniels, uh, and it's one of the fastest growing whiskey brands in America right now. It, yeah, it will. Yeah. it will be huge for a long time. Yeah, yeah. The story of Nearest Green is is a great story, and uh, I implore anybody that's listening to this could just look it up. Yeah, Nearest Green. So, uh, so yeah. So the last one, uh, whenever you're ready, Let's go. Um, is the chai ball. So this is a chai liqueur, uh, which is uh, cinnamon, warm spices, nutmeg. Uh, a chai liqueur with my house made fireball. So, bourbon, cayenne, and cinnamon. And uh, this cayenne. is probably, yeah, this All is right. our second biggest seller. I am most excited. I'm excited. excited. Yeah, yeah so. I was going to say. I thought Stats. you were going in the direction of a highball. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Chai, chai ball. Chai ball. So, so fireball. Chai house, ball. Our, our house made fireball right. and, uh, and a chai liqueur. So, it's like a spicy white Russian. I'm gonna need more ice. It's like a yeah yeah I wait, I re iced yeah, as well. I, I, Thank you, uh, White I... Castle, for sponsoring our the ice on this uh, <laughs> week's episode. I asked the lady and she was just like, "Just get a cup of ice, bro." Yeah, I recommend ice for this one for sure. Well, Rob, I think you're gonna have to come back on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New favorite repeat guest. I just re iced. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Icing is. Uh, Typically done with Smirnoff. And you said you just uh, pre you prepared all these cocktails like right before you came over here too. Yeah, um, when uh, oh, that so good. David smell. asked me to be on the show, I was like, "Well, shit, I gotta find something to make." Yeah, dude. Months ago, <laughs> <laughs> like it's been like planned. At three o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Everybody needs a pinch hitter, and you are crushing it. So uh, I get chai. Like like just like you said, cinnamon nutmeg, but then it, that almost almost translates into like a kind of like a light toffee kind of thing when it all works together. Oh, this is amazing. There's kind of like going a with the capsaicin build too. Oh yeah, oh, okay. David's in. David's already in. See now you're sounding like a beer snob or a coffee snob too. God's God's country, <laughs> just God's country. Oh yeah, that's really good. This is nice. That's fantastic, man. Yeah, this is our second biggest seller. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Although at the new place, it's funny, at the new place, uh, espresso martinis and Irish coffees have been flying out the door. So it, they're they're up there with the chai ball now. You got that you got that Irish Hill Clifton uh, neighborhood yeah. coming in. Yeah. Yeah. So so I do have to ask, have you had to kick anybody out yet? Or cut cut anybody off? No. No, I haven't. Uh which is good. It's very fortunate. But uh, you know, 
Well, I, I may have to. Uh... I'm just trying to figure out like the consumer of somebody that like enjoys coffee cocktails, but then also enjoys coffee cocktails too much. <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, I think... hey, man, can I get one more cocktail? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. the only I've had people get like three cocktails while they've been in there, but that's about it. Yeah, you know, maybe well, challenge accepted. <clears throat> maybe three beers while they're there, but that's about it. I, it, it's you recognize when you come in the door that this isn't a place where you drink to excess. It's right. not a bar. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's a third space. It's a place yeah. for me to go in at 8 a.m. watch whatever Australian Open matches on at the time. So there's it's a coffee. group. There's a group of guys that would come in on uh, 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 in the morning and watch Formula One racing. Oh hell, hell yeah! And oh, yeah. I was like, I didn't anticipate Formula One racing was a big deal, but it is. It's huge. And uh, they would come in and they would get a couple of cocktails on Saturday because during this on Saturdays, I guess, is when they do the, like the qualifying or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Formula One guy, so correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and they they would come in on Saturdays and drink a couple of drinks and then on Sundays when the race would happen on Sunday I can't serve until 10 o'clock and so they would just wait and then they would come down to the register <laughs> at 10 <laughs> o'clock awesome. while it because my theater because they would watch it up in the theater which by the way it's a 155 inch projection screen it's an, am- yeah. it's an amazing <laughs> upstairs area there. maybe some live podcast I like I thought yeah. your, your I thought your last place was cool with the theater room there, no, it's a this huge isn't even great. It's but way, the the yeah. upstairs at the new pl- at the new spot is. I wanted to make it like your own living room. Is yeah, what, and is you what did. My goal was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were talking about him living upstairs, and I've been upstairs, and I'm like, I could live there. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I yeah. wish that was my living room. <laughs> yeah. If I rented yeah. that out, I would be real happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's really cool, and I'm and that's something I'm really proud of, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, and then once we get the upper deck opened, that's going to even be. Even better, hell yeah! So yeah, well, it's cool to see all these different elements of Louisville kind of coming together: beer and bourbon and cocktails and coffee. You want to uh, use that as a segue to Louisville beer news? Uh, no, what I want to do okay. is just put on record <laughs> that the next time I come into your establishment, which will be in the next week or so, I'm going tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to say it's usually like <laughs> for the cocktails. It's usually about twice a week for you. Yeah, okay. I, well, you have the data. This is, you told us to track this. Um, but when I ask for a drip, just serve me the chai ball. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. I just feel like, yeah. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> Today is starting off awesome. Uh, but yeah, we could we could talk a bit, a little bit about Louisville news. Yeah. Uh, so I've lost my agenda. <laughs> but I play, the number I one wrong. thing was the Holy Grail <laughs> celebrating what? Their 12th, 12th year anniversary of the Holy Grail. Love Holy Grail. Uh, one of the OGs in the beer industry here in Louisville. Um, in the I, world. It's where my wife and I took. We had our first date. Oh, that's that's awesome. really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've had a lot of first dates there. It didn't really end up <laughs> well, but you know, I, th- I think that's a that's a heralding moment though. Like if I if I meet my wife at Holy and Grail, the, then and the funny thing is, she doesn't even drink beer. Perfect. Uh, yeah, like, I'm, yeah. First dates, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I have a similar. She didn't. Situation. She didn't tell me she didn't drink beer until after. I um. Like, she just really like. Why freaks. have you drank three liters of Terrace Bulba? <laughs> 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 That's uh, love, man. Yeah, that's uh, love. The the Louisville beer community would not be the same without Holy Grail opening no. up twelve years. They predate um, b- between beer store and Holy Grail. They they beer, they predate against the grain by what three years? I guess. Um, Louisville beer store was first, right? Louisville then, beer store was first. Yeah, had, they, they had it been still been open, I think they would have been thirteen years. This How year. long has Sergio's been there? God only knows. <clears throat> like who the who the Sergio S- slightly knows. longer, right? Yeah, I don't know. Sure. But you know, it's it's one of those one of those organizations that has been an anchor for so many people. people but anyway, Tyler and Lori were one of the people who brought beer into Louisville and kind of were the people who would stand in the pillar and take the like shots in the face. And it was just you go there, nobody gets it. You keep doing your thing, nobody gets it. But people got it, and they established a really cool business that really helped Louisville beer become what it is now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, not not Grail, but their sister company, Louisville Beer Store, which yeah. I just mentioned. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to work for them for about a year and a half back in the day. And without that knowledge base, I would not be doing this podcast. I would not be doing this whole ill trail thing. Like, I wouldn't be doing anything. They took a chance on me because... Well, you'd be doing something. I wouldn't be doing anything in beer. Yeah. Uh, they. I mean, I... Tyler and Lori took a chance on me because typically when they invited people to work for them, it was people that actually knew their shit. And I was going in there with just like blind ambition. Like, I can do this. Uh, please. 
You did. Yeah, and and, and I did. Yeah, uh, but yeah, between the f- the folks I got to learn from and the the folks I got to meet, meant a lot. Holy Grail was part of that whole uh, situation. Um, happy to see that they're still rocking and rolling. Yeah, I mean, throughout the years hosting international events, be it Swansea Day or St. Sour's Day, uh, they brought Swansea Day to Louisville. <clears throat> like, let's absolutely. be real, that's and huge. They, they brought Swansea Day to Louisville. And for when, people who don't know what Swansea Day is, this brewery Cantillon. which is like Cantillon. really just a sour aging facility in belgium called cantion yeah, right. releases it come on you're, you're let's, let's not downplay yeah, it yeah you're I mean, do- you're boiling <laughs> yeah they, is- they, there's this brewery uh, in belgium that releases a very special aged beer to very select places all over the world especially blended beer it's done intentionally every year it's a different combination of what's blended beer. space so um when you make beer and then you eventually age it in a barrel be it oak or you know whatever staves you use uh you start with the initial base that you put into it and then the depending young beer, on yeah the young the beer, stuff that just got made yeah and then depending over time you add uh additional ingredients to that be it fruit be it uh additional yeast strains um so you can kind of pick your own adventure on how you're going to build this beer um but each barrel kind of has its own character similar to bourbon or whiskey yeah and then for the places that are doing more of a blending aspect they kind of taste each barrel as they go through and rate it on different scales of uh tartness oaky etc and give it this profile um so basically going through a sales marketing yeah. analytics perspective. Or or basically just how any distillery works. Yeah. And then you 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 blend back like X amount of percent with X amount of percent to create essentially a one-off product that you couldn't ever really reproduce. Mm. So, you know, you may have the super tart, uh, oak-aged, you know, blonde ale, saison, whatever. And then you have this raspberry, same, same treatment, same original, uh, like, Blit or uh, same original brew uh, that you put into a different barrel, and then you kind of like amalgamate the two in between, like the sweet components and the define components. amalgamate. Just combine, <laughs> combine to yeah. reach the yeah. like the <laughs> palette point that you want. I guess. Yeah, yeah. You you like establish a goal. I think, with I what think you're it's. Trying a, to get. I'm yeah. kind of the naysayer here. I think a lot more of that is built up in marketing. Do you do you know about the Cantillon effect in economics? No, we'll no, say I, I we'll save know. that for a future episode. I have but there's an entire then why bring it up? <laughs> well, because Cantillon Day is fine. Cantillon Cantillon is a brewery in Belgium <laughs> that releases blendery. a very small quantity blender. Yes, actually, no, of they beer do, they, they do produce. Never mind. Uh, to their specific accounts, the Cantillon effect in economics refers to the fact <laughs> it's, it's that you made up. No, 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 it's not. Is it's it not. in basic, basic economics, the book? Yeah, this is based in... It's the Cantillon effect is that when uh, fresh money enters the monetary supply, it gets only pointed to the major points of influence, like the World Banks, the economic... Tundra. So again, not to get into politics in this episode, but the Cantillon effect I go more applies to <laughs> world-distributed <laughs> beer and also to the world global e- economic system. So more on that in uh, my... Conspiracy channel. Uh, More on your blog. Uh, uh, can take your comments underbelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was so lost on me. The Cantillon effect. Just look, Google it. I guys. think we just wanted to say happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> fucking the grills. The grills. Happy yeah, birthday yeah. and thank you for being you. Thank you for being you so that I could meet my wife. Hell yeah. There, there you go. go. Hell yeah. There you go. And my future wife. There you go. Yeah. 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 Wherever she may be. We at drink Holy, at we, Holy Grail right now, and you just left so you could do this podcast. So uh, priorities. <laughs> we started this episode with Uncle Disheveled, and we could also, uh, at this point, wrap it back in Uncle Disheveled Day. When is that? Uh, it, it'll actually happen uh, by the time this podcast comes out. It, it will have already happened. Uh, it's past particle or something like that. Thanks a lot. And, past uh, participle. Yeah, that one. Past, yeah. past We've particle. all had like four or five cocktails at this point, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. at this point, it's, it's never really, enough. getting really rough. Uh, but yeah, Uncle Uncle D-Day, my wide... It's... Did you say D-Day? <laughs> yeah. D- <laughs> Uncle D-Day, yes. When did this turn into a war? <laughs> God damn it. I remember my friends before <laughs> Uncle D-Day. Uncle D-Day. Yeah. <laughs> 
In other news, uh, inside job. Is, is which... this what happens when I bring cocktails on the show? <laughs> well, <laughs> we give everyone a moment. We'll give everyone a moment. I, I say I'll never edit this podcast, but I will give everyone a moment. <sighs> and scene. Uh, <clears throat> What'd you all get that I didn't get? That's the question I had. Well, we're, what were you pouring in? Just Mr. Black or... Okay. And you know the other thing that's really cool is uh inside job. Have you guys heard that inside job? <laughs> I'll pick it. I'll pick it. I up. Find, okay, Give better a, a better way to come I'll back. What was that though? <laughs> what I just Oh the cin- Uncle D the symbol the, the symbol the child made. Yeah. No, no, the like Seriously though, the thing that I just took a sip of oh. John's, like what was? Oh, that? that was the old fashioned. That was the old fashioned. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just without the yeah. ice. It's very good. Yeah, the pregame old fashioned. Yeah. Gotcha. It's so it's not your typical old fashioned. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, assuming we've said I'll, everything I'll, that we have it. to I'll, say I'll, about I'll, I'll Uncle D it. Day, I got it. <laughs> just keep saying D. <laughs> just, D. <laughs> just keep saying D. <laughs> Uncle D. Uncle D Day. Yeah. <laughs> and scene, David. <laughs> what kind of crowd are you trying to get here? We don't really care. And in other news, uh, when one local golf course brewery closes, mm-hmm. another downtown Louisville brewery opens. Or it's kind of like when it... you score a hole in one okay, on a golf course and it goes this. through the underground pipe. No, no, no. Okay. No, no. All right. We're going to one more time. All right, all right, all right. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is going to be the best B roll we've ever had. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. All foam. I'm, I'm this might, shit is good. I might be out, by the this way. Yeah. We, there, well, I hope we didn't drink 64 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. In other news, uh, when mm-hmm. one golf course brewery closes, mm-hmm. another downtown Louisville brewery uh, is in planning. Mm. So we do have um, a little bit of news from the folks at Oldham Brewing Company that were currently on the outskirts of kind of Jefferson County. And they are planning a brewery uh, downtown at... Um, inside the Waterson Expressway. Inside the Waterson Expressway, downtown. In, They'll have jobs there. Yes, they will have jobs. Um, but they're they're looking to relocate inside uh, downtown Louisville. Um, friend of the show, Brandon Bass, is kind of helping them get their feet underneath of them as far as a space and a place to grow and make their beer um and friend of the homebrew community john fee i would say as well yeah they're they're planning right now they've just announced a little bit ago um and basically i've been there um i think michael's been there once or twice no okay but anyways uh the proposed location is inside an old um armored truck company so lots of concrete, lots of walls, bank, hence the, There's the vault inside job. Ready to go for the apocalypse. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think they're going to have a good a good go at it. Uh, they released some concept art of kind of with the facade of what this will be. Um, so I'm excited to see. Uh, we haven't had a lot of news about like new breweries open up in Louisville um, other than Pivot. Uh, but and, you know, trellis. and what and they trellis. want to was, call it. I was it, just about to ask if you guys <laughs> talked about Trellis yet. Oh, yeah. They've yeah. been on the podcast. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But these guys will be inside job, bring company hypothetically. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, that'll that'll be the third brewery in the old Louisville ish area uh, between old Louisville itself, Noble um, Funk, Noble Funk, and and them. Um, inside job, it'll be good. Yeah, Rob, what I'm else excited. Did you bring for us? What's that, Rob? What else did you bring for us? Oh, uh, the other show and tell. We've yeah. been through your uh, three cocktail show and tell. Yeah, th- thank you. By the <laughs> way, <laughs> oh, there's more. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. More. let's okay. go. Let's go. I got plenty more. Let's go. Um, no, so at the at the shop this week, I don't know if uh, uh, this is probably going to air after this week, but uh, we're doing uh, Royal Rumble this week. Oh yeah. And I'm a re- I'm a big wrestling. I didn't know that nerd. About you. I'm a dork when it comes to wrestling. I I w- this is how much of a nerd I am. And how old I am, for that matter. I went to WrestleMania 2 on closed circuit TV at Fuck a movie yeah. theater. Fuck yeah. 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 I, I went to WrestleMania 2 at a movie theater. Closed circuit. Um, I attended WrestleMania 13 in Chicago at Rosemont Horizon. Where it's the famous uh, uh, Bret Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin match. 
My favorite. Yeah. Uh, are you not a yeah. wrestling guy? No. No, David that's knows that. Actually, actually oh, okay. my favorite. Okay. <laughs> every 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 week he just recounts the, yeah. the play yeah. by play. Yeah. It is a fantastic match. It's one of the best matches of all time. Um, but yeah, so we're showing the Royal Rumble, uh, all of the Royal Rumbles at the shop Hell all yeah. week long. Um, which like I already told the story about the guy that's going to it. Um, so yeah, so I mean, and on the stairwell going upstairs, there's a picture of an old dusty roads. Have you, have you guys seen that yet? I don't think I've noticed that. Oh, uh, so a friend of mine, uh, uh, he worked for, I'm, I'm going to drop a name here. Gilbert Corsi. Uh, um, old Gilbert. Yeah. He, he did announcing for OVW wrestling. He, he works okay. for WDRB news. Yep. Uh, I hate dropping names, but Gilbert, Hey, what's up? Um, he, uh, someone had dropped off a bunch of, uh, like programs, old OVW programs. And if anyone doesn't know, OVW is like the local, like Ohio Valley wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. And they dropped off a whole bunch of OVW and mid South wrestling programs from the Mm. (laughs) seventies. And So so we got some, um, uh, who was who was in the seventies and OVW. like oh like Harley pre- Race McMahon. Yeah. yeah Harley Race Dusty Roads Ric Flair it continues to be a feeder too yeah of yeah course. it is and yeah. so uh, Gilbert gave me this box he's like hey do, do you think you can do something with these I'm like uh, yeah and so I have a picture of Dusty Roads a very young somewhat svelte. <laughs> Dusty Rhodes uh, hanging on the uh, stairwell. That's how I like people to describe me. <laughs> um, uh, hanging at the shop. So yeah, I'm a big wrestling nerd, and uh, so we're showing all the all the old Royal Rumbles this week. Um, when WrestleMania comes, we'll be showing all the old WrestleManias at the shop. Uh, it's just something that I like to do for fun. You know, show it on the TVs, and it, it's not for everybody, but neither's pregame. Yeah, and I accept that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> if you're here, self-deprecating you're here. business tips. Yeah, well, it, it, it is. It's. I mean, scratch your own itch. If it, I I made the shop how I want a place that I want to go to. So, so uh, I, I only ask this because I like to go to OVW occasionally. Have you been recently to any? Of the Not Thursday recently. Night shows? Once once Gilbert left, I stopped going. Um, I'm uh, friends with his wife Diane, and and um. So we, I would go every now and then with Diane, and uh, we would watch the shows. And but Gilbert's doing something else now with a different wrestling association. Mm-hmm. But AEW. No, I wish, I wish, <laughs> Gilbert, if you're out there, get on AEW. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, but uh, it's it's really cool um, to to see it at the shop, and and I've had a lot of comments this week about it. It's really it's it's something kind of cool. It's just fucking fun. Yeah, like, that's exactly out. it. It's, it's just it's, fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's it's like a lot of people will look up on the TV and be like, "Oh, hey, that's Stone Cold Steve Austin." Yeah. Like, yeah, it is. The wrestling yeah. subculture is alive and well. Oh, yeah. I, I am yeah. a huge wrestling geek. Yeah, it's yep. almost like I I would say there's been no point that it's more alive than when I was in like sixth grade. I feel like it. No, nope, it's back up now. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. With AEW, yeah. it's up there. Yeah, With because it's a great, it's a great uh, distraction uh, from the uh, equally kayfabe American political system. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't pay attention to politics. Pay attention to professional wrestling. It's way more fun. It's way more productive. Yeah, yeah. You'll drink way more Louisville beer. And support your local economy. <laughs> That's right. And uh, That's right. not give politicians access to it. Well, with uh, <laughs> with a tear in my eye, this is one of the greatest podcasts that we've ever done here. To, ever recorded. God damn right, brother. To, <laughs> to paraphrase the the still existing, not late great. He's he's still alive. Ric Flair. Uh, Charlotte, hi. Uh, if uh, she's you, married, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that point, um, obviously, you just gave something to plug with uh, what you're doing. But what else would you like to plug? Yeah, do you have a second? Uh, a second plug. Um, just everything about pregame. I mean, it's yeah. it's something that like it, it's it's different, and that's the best way that I can describe it. It's a different coffee shop. It is not your typical coffee shop. If you're looking for some place that you know is very serene and very bland and has you know tables and chairs from a yard sale, that's not me. Uh, a lot of coffee shops do, and I'm not trying to be uppity about that, but 
that's just how a lot of coffee shops are. You're proud. Um, yeah, I, I'm very proud of what I've done, and I continue to be proud, and I, I want people to know that this is something that you can come in, and you're going to get the absolute best customer service that you'll have at any coffee shop that you come to. And it won't be generic. It'll be what you it'll be yeah. you yeah. like it yeah. is you and yeah. when you come in that door you're gonna see my smiling face yeah that shiny head <laughs> yeah and the shiny head <laughs> because i'm there every day and you know i i want to have conversations with you i want to have conversations with everybody that comes through i want to make a drink that you like i feel like we have a five-star review from some point in the podcast <laughs> that supports this <laughs> that's right yeah. that's right but no come see me let's have a conversation let's talk sports let's talk wrestling you know, I'll even talk politics with you. I don't care. You know, let's let's but that because that's what coffee shops are for. They're for communities to come together and have conversations, not for you to just hide out and put a, put your headphones on and and hide. It's come have a conversation with me. Let's let's, you know, establish a community together. Yeah. And if you're doing that, you can do the Pomodoro thing. Like, put your headphones on for 20 minutes and then go talk to real people for three yeah, minutes. Yeah, like, just absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. John, what do you got? Um, I'm going to shout out Hypatia of Alexandria. The like. Can you uh, spell Hypatia? H I P A T I A, I think. I think it's just Latin. I'm not sure. <laughs> So I've been working on a long, long thing about uh, buoyancy and hydrometers, and I just learned that <sighs> buoyancy, uh, Hypatia. <laughs> with all the big everybody, words. everybody thinks that uh, Archimedes was the person who discovered buoyancy, and uh, likely he was. Yes, Eureka, exactly. But was Hypatia activities. was the first human in existence who ever got a letter to contract to explain and produce a product to measure the density or weight of water. So shout out to Hypatia um, of Alexandria, the the real OG, by which I mean original gravity. David. <laughs> I'm going to shout out cycling. cycling. I don't cycle. It's early in January, late January, but it's time to start cycling. Yeah, you, you're right. You need to get out, stretch those legs. Yeah. Get it in the cold. Bikes are fun. Bikes are fun. Two wheels, more thrills. And <laughs> once you get around to the summer... <laughs> You're going to yeah. be doing just fine. <laughs> Fuck yeah. If you can learn to cycle now, you can cycle then. Yeah. Shout out cycling. Shout out if you cycling. can learn to cycle now, <laughs> you can cycle then in the heat. <laughs> and the seasons, they go round and round. Uh, on, on my on my end, since we're already on the topic of... Um, since we're already on the talk, uh, topic of wrestling, uh, shout out to the yeah. unnamed, somewhat secret, upcoming... OVW documentary coming coming to Netflix. Shh. No, we can oh, say it now. Really, it's, it's been reported. Uh, but yeah, OVW. Uh, they're doing a little mini series uh, created by the same individual that did the Formula One uh, Netflix doc and uh, the um, Tiger King. No, uh, Drive the, to Survive. Drive to yeah, Drive to Survive. Uh, also, Last Chance You. That same director. He's been working on. The There's a lot of people that's come through OVW. <clears throat> Kim, yeah, Kimmy a Schmidt. A lot of people. John Cena. So uh, OV, so yeah, Randy so Orton, sometime in February Brock or March, the, uh, the the new OVW documentary will be coming on Netflix, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, and and if, the whole goal of that is to try to bring it back to like wrestling one-on-one, in my mind. They're right. trying to like make it a reality show, which it is what it always was. Just it's just the, yeah, the, the it's, medium. It, no, it's has a, changed. It's, it's a soap opera. The medium is the yeah. message. It's a very physical soap opera. And yeah. for anyone to say, and this is the, the this is where I'm going to get offensive or defensive here. Yeah. For anyone to say that wrestling is fake, I want to punch him in the face. Is the Cirque du Soleil fake? That it's funny you say that because that's exactly what I equate it to. Yep. Word for word, I equate Cirque du Soleil to wrestling. Yeah. It's just a little bit more violent. The, I completely the, agree. The, yeah. the storyline is predetermined, sure. Yeah, but it doesn't the, mean... the result of a match is predetermined. Yeah, but what they those guys go through and women, uh, Charlotte, what those guys go through and women uh, is unbelievably physical and women. It's it, it's unbelievable. Like I can't. That's the world that I come from. Is is strength and conditioning, health and wellness, and. It, yeah, yeah, you have, and you have no like that's in, it's in, like ugh, it's insane to think about what those people go through. Yeah, so, any of us would have cardiac arrest. Yeah, 
So yeah. what we learned today on this podcast <laughs> is that you should drink coffee, you should drink yeah. coffee cocktails, visit pregame, and support your local wrestling. And Go wrestle. to OVW. Go to yeah. OVW. Yeah. yeah, visit Al Snow at OVW and uh, check them out. And we're going to end this episode like we have in the last two yeah. years, every episode. Every episode. Underberg. It's a tradition. Oh, I don't know. A tradition no unlike any other. can uh, uh, ascribe or get away from tradition. We've always done this. It's right. an aperitif. We've always ended every episode it's with an It's a digestive. Yeah, so, well, depends on when you drink it, right? And Rob, you are familiar with Unberg, right? Not at all. Uh, it, oh, not at all. It's similar really? to yeah. your um, African liqueur. It's just, it's a dark nope. herbal. But yeah, well, yeah, sure it is. It's nope. a dark herbal bitter that is 45 degree angle. Just let it happen. After a good meal. It says. And cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> 45 degree angle. Just let it happen. Thank you, everybody. 